The strategic analysis and institutional support team at CETO is focused on what we call soft costs. You think about the hard cost of solar energy as a panel, a module, an inverter. Soft costs are all the sort of intangible costs that go into building a solar system. So we tried to find innovative ways of you know, designing programs, working with organizations, funding organizations to work with us in a collaborative way. We're taking real issues and trying to find solutions for them. One of the biggest barriers is where we want to site our work. We're talking about building out millions and millions of acres worth of solar energy in the next few decades as we try to meet our clean energy goals. We're trying to figure out how can we make the most of opportunities like deploying solar on brownfields or like old industrial sites, old mining sites. We're also looking into things like floating solar so that we can use reservoirs or lakes. Agrivoltaics is the co-location of solar and agriculture. So you can have things like grazing animals underneath solar panels, you can have pollinator plants, and you can also have crops. So it looks a little different everywhere across the U.S. It has the advantage of kind of using that land twice uh, and allowing people to maintain farming and maintain agricultural land while also producing clean energy. You know, interconnection, this is an, an area in which uh, there's a lot of rules and regulation as it comes to adding you know, new generation to the grid and it requires all of these players from diverse set of organizations to work. And I'm talking about utilities, independent system operators, developers who build these projects, public interest organizations, equity and energy justice type of organizations really working together to find practical solutions so we can add more renewable energy generation to the grid. There's all these goals that we have about making sure that solar energy is cheap and widespread and deployed equitably. And to do that, we really have to track and ask our questions about the data and make sure that data is both collected and accessible. And we have some great thinkers from across the U.S. that apply to many of our funding opportunities that are really trying to be at the cutting edge. What really drives me, I think, is figuring out how can people live better with the things that we're learning and with the, all this um, amazing research that we're funding here at the department.